you had a, a little bit of black last time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's where. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a loop. We're gonna relive this minute over and over and over again. <laughs> over and right. Over and over and over again. So yeah, it seems to be working. Hello, Will. So I was telling these guys, Gabe's uh, twins have RSV, and Jack's babysitter uh, bailed on him at the very last second and so um that's where he's at okay yeah uh, oh there we go my favorite singer said the best way to babysit kids is just to leave them in the woods <laughs> yes that's what she said and she uh, meant it <laughs> Probably because she's crazy, but she's got an angel like voice. Is Aurora? Uh, she's a, yeah, she's pretty great. Yeah, I, but she is a loony. I, I was expecting you to say Bear Grylls. <laughs> nope, I went totally <laughs> crazy direction, you know. But, uh, you know, she is. Uh, she makes a grown man cry. I mean, she's a great singer. She's, she's got an amazing voice. My favorite yeah. episode of the Guild is when uh, when she gets, or, or when uh, the one girl, one woman gets Tank to come over and babysit her kids, and so Tank takes the kids and sticks them in a dog kennel. <laughs> I got pictures of my son in the dog kennel, so don't make fun of that. And the two kids are in there crying, and somebody comes over like, "Oh my God, what's that smell? Well, I didn't know I was supposed to change them." Oh, uh, so funny. They're they're a lot easier to deal with once they're crate trained. Yes. Yeah. Well, obviously, you know, everything should be crate trained. And that's primitive and offensive. You use shock collars, okay? You know that you let the kid have his freedom, you know, uh, but just when things get out of hand, just push the button and you know maybe put on some earmuffs or something. Ooh, usually, you don't have to worry about them running away if you do that too. No, you got to bury a fence. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the uh, Deep Night Revelation. Uh, we'll be picking up where we left off last week. <clears throat> uh, the travelers are currently in a cargo container at proving site number nine on the planet Neon, and night has fallen. They've built this little uh, moat of fire around the cargo container because after night falls, uh, the... Peterson's Creepers, which are um, spider, scorpion like ins giant insects, about the size of a Doberman, come out. And um, they are attracted to electromagnetics and uh, that's what brought the travelers to where they're at is a big electromagnetic blast. So these guys have awoken and they are hungry and they've already eaten uh, Captain Hambly and uh, yeah, the, you guys are uh, in a bind. But before we get started, we would like to thank a friend of the Greenwater Guild Hall. <clears throat> None of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. They are just products that we really like. And tonight we would like to thank uh, the Speechless Bard. Speechless Bard makes leather products for your tabletop role-playing games, uh, which <laughs> that always sounds a little... makes leather products for your role-playing games. <laughs> No, not those kinds of leather products. They're actually Who's forged. the dungeon master now? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, uh, no, these are... She makes things like leather covers for your core rule book. She's got a dice rolling mat that when you roll it up, it kind of looks like a spell scroll. Um, she has this really cool thing called the spell compendium that looks like a really small spell book that's uh, bound in leather. And when you open it, one side, it's bifurcated, and one side is for holding a deck of cards, and the other side can be used as a rolling tray. And the inside cover is actually a magnetic spell tracker. Uh, she does all of the work by hand. She can customize anything. She hand paints everything. She's an amazingly talented artist. If you are going to order, especially with the holidays coming up, you're going to want to get that order in soon because... Of shipping concerns and she's in the UK so it can take for a little bit of time to cross the pond as they say and the link to her site is in down below in the <clears throat> in the video description 
If you are a fan of our Deep Net Revelation campaign, we do have a website via Obsidian Portal. That link is also down below. Um, the adventure log is written in the manner of news articles. Um, right now, they're focusing on you know news as it comes in from the frontier of all of these uh, planets that are on the edge of the Great Rift, but it will soon be switching to an internal newsletter aboard um, a large ship as they go deeper and deeper into uncharted territory, um, into deep, deep, deep space. Um, if you're a fan of that page, please go to the front page and give us a thumbs up. We do like to see the fan likes, and we hope you enjoy. So, um, I was telling these guys uh, we are down two players. Um, Gabe's out, and uh, with sick kids, and Jack or yeah, Jack, <clears throat> Jackie is out. Um, his he <laughs> same kid kid problem. He uh, doesn't have a sitter, so he's hoping that he may be able to pop in. A little bit later which i hope he can do that leaves us uh i guess it is sardis turn so <clears throat> the night has gone on um and uh to explain um gabe's uh see this is where i get confused because we have a real person named jack and then we have gabe's character he's named jack but they're not the same person um gabe's character jack <clears throat> um ran off um, trying to lure some of these feeders away and uh, I am going to say that he was successful in doing that and we're going to remove two of them and they they take off into the night following him so Sarda uh, you're inside the container is there anything that you would like to do I know you're keeping an eye on uh, Sael here um what what do you got in mind <clears throat> shooter <laughs> you, you i mean you know accidents happen i mean look at poor hambly <laughs> well we have a, a code word to initiate dealing with her there is protocol i, I i'm not going to shoot her as long as there are other threats out here. It's just that I don't trust her to... I'm not turning my back on her, that's for sure. Um, so, I don't really have a clear shot on any of the bugs at the moment. So, I think I'm just going to basically you know, holding my pistol and as soon as I... Especially like this opening, this gap, uh, if, if any of them come to that gap, I'm taking a shot. Okay. Alright, so you are basically... Uh, guarding this gap, if something comes through, you're readying an action that you will take a shot. <clears throat> yep. Gotcha. George McDuff, you see uh, Jack through the through these flames. You see Jack take off running into the night, and two of these feeders run after him, which, of course, diminish the, the uh, threat to you guys. Um, in it a, increases the threat on Jack. It increases the threat on Jack. And... Uh, George, go ahead and make a recon plus intellect check. That is my specialty. <laughs> yes. The first couple of sessions, everybody always is like, oh my god, we gotta make a recon check. Well, you know, I, you know, and I kind of cursed it a little bit, the recon rolling up the character. Like, usually I'm okay with, like, like a recon of one is nice. This was a little excessive. Like, I would have... There's some other skills I really wanted. Well, a, you're making... only like three. There's only like four careers that give you recon. It's, it's yeah, it's a I hard know. skill to pick up. Yeah, and and you guys are just starting out, and so uh, luckily you have a high recon because you're making up for it for the rest of the group. Yeah, so now I have a seven plus three mm -hmm. recon is ten plus two for intellect is twelve. Okay, so it's hard for you to see um, because of the firelight. Um, but what you you can kind of you can see some like vegetation moving in the distance um, up in the northwest quadrant. Um, you can see vegetation moving, and you can hear what sounds like a herd of ravenous somethings going after something in the in the foliage that you can no longer see because it's dark over there. You're blinded by the light, but you also remember that that is the direction the that captain. that the, 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 um, 
that you sent the work the tool sack work bot off it yeah and so it does appear that it is working that these that these creepers are chasing after the the bot okay that's good um is it possible like i i know i can take a minor action and i know i'm only armed with a shotgun what is the range of the feeders or creepers things that are chasing jack i thought maybe if i could maybe take a pot shot at one of them and that would only be one chasing him and then kind of get into the container for cover because i know there's a lot of other ones that are kind of creeping around so with a minor action you can move six meters um creeper yeah. the feeders can actually move at eight meters with a minor action so they potentially are going to overtake jack so if you wanted to uh let's see let's see okay minor action i've got six meters to the front of the container right if you wanted a better shot oh that's gonna put me in you know what yeah i guess the front of the container would work best for you yeah so which is really what jack wanted anyways which is why he ran off that was his initial plan yeah they're gonna overtake him so I'm going to move there and take out my sh and use the shotgun. And yeah, I'm going to try to shoot one of the one of the one of these bugs to get one of them off Jack's tail and maybe <sighs> right. <laughs> I want to make sure that Jack doesn't get eaten. I mean, we're already down two crew members. He's not even here to defend himself, so let's help him out. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, Gabe, you got to roll up a new character. I killed your NPC. Yeah, like if I miss, am I gonna kill Gabe? Like that's no, bad. I'm not that cruel. He's got a long ways to travel to slap me in the face. I'll tell you that much. So. Okay, so let's roll to hit, I guess. Uh, that's another seven plus. My gun was one. Yeah, I have gun slug one, so that's eight, and dexterity for nine. So that's a plus one to damage you hit. Okay, excellent. That is going to be four dice with the shotgun, plus one for damage. It's five, that's eleven, uh, thirteen, seventeen, eighteen points of damage to <laughs> one of those little bugs. So you blow it up. It, oh, you, that's cool. you can see that's you can cool see winner. in the dirt that there's stuff you know flying in the air and you hear Thanks. the 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 archetypical alien scream that I can't do there, I don't have a flanger available so <laughs> <laughs> uh, thinkers thinkers are thinking I don't like the idea of like a thinker just so you know. Makes me nervous. Right. As well it should. That's all the thinkers are gonna do. Um, at least that's all the thing. That's all they're going to do with actions that you can interpret. Um, but George down here, <clears throat> this thinker here that moved over, you can see that it is uh, as it moves towards the wall of fire. And there's this little bit of a gap here. Now, obviously, you can see by the, the coloring that that's going to be a hot zone. And it's kind of uh, 
probing that area with its with its front claws seeing you know is it is it going to catch me on fire is it hot and then it kind of backs off like it's it's figuring things out uh over here these feeders because there is a gap they are going to all balls and take 1d damage as they come through they are going to take three each that's better than nothing right okay and the shotgun was just keeping track of my own ammo here so Two minor actions. All right. Bocephus, what would you like to do? guy right here so you wouldn't see him yes i would i have live detection up oh okay that's true that is true so uh, well i guess that it's the next round and it lasts 10 seconds right that's not my question let me double check something i mean i guess my question is Okay, so yeah, it would animal, human, and so on. So yeah, you are able to detect the thinker. Now, the creepy thing about when you detect the, the thinker is that um, initially you are, you are getting almost like a primitive humanoid mind detection. But then you realize that this is actually... It's not a primitive humanoid. It's a really advanced um, animal. So these things are really, really smart. Fair enough. Uh, I want to use telepathy. Okay. Uh, the communication of emotion and basic feelings is accomplished by telepathy. Uh, as well as... you're using oh, you're using tell empathy. Yes. Okay. Yes. Which under the telepathy it's under the right. telepathy. Line. Right. It's empathy rather yeah. than telepathy. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And uh and what I want to do is I want to send this thinker right here uh an emotion that uh you know I want to make it think the sun is about to come up here in this area. Hmm. That's, That's what I want to do. That's one of its basic uh, things that it seems to have to deal with is the sun and all that. Uh, and, and so that's what I want to do. And so here is my roll. A nine, but my difficulty was six. So yeah, that, that turned out real well. And uh, Okay. So you, you send this thinker, the... I'm trying to think of what that emotion would be. I guess it would be an anxiety. That, yes. Some fear. But, um, so it has this anxiety that, um, that the sun is going to come up. Yeah. Even though the sun just recently went down. Yes, but the feeling is on its internal clock. You know, that's part of its advanced 
good stuff, hopefully. If not, I just wasted some psi points. No, it is it that yeah that it is concerned, um, and confused is the is kind of the general feeling that you get back. Okay. And it kind of it, it, in its confusion, it kind of halts its action where it's at. It's it's not moving forward any further. It's. Not that you can really see it, but um, okay. if you could, it would be looking towards the sky, which it still sees, you know, darkness. Now, it would be my hope, though, that it, it starts giving commands with the thought. You know, I, I, I can double down as turns go on to, to have this battle of wits with the tanker. But, uh, you know, I'm just letting you as the DM know my, my end game is to make it want to go ahead and get its little guys and leave. Right. Yeah. And this is kind of the scene on the berm, which is the the dirt mound that half surrounds the camp as these things are coming in. I guess they're a little bit bigger than a Deverman. They're they're actually uh they're pretty small. large. Yeah, they're pretty large. Scary. CL Sorry, can I uh, take a little movement, too? Yes, you certainly can. Yes, I want to kind of creep myself... Oh, yeah. I want to kind of creep myself kind of over in this direction. Right up in there. That's all right. It's just a few meters, but... Sure. It puts me more to the forward part of the container. Okay. All right. Where is her rifle? Oh, there it is, right in front of me. She is going to take a shot on this feeder right here. going to miss with a four. And then for a minor action, she doesn't like the fact that she missed with a four. And so she Runs past George and runs into the to the entrance of the container. Oh come on, chicken! Anson Anson kind of steps over here and has her pistol uh, drawn and aimed towards the opening. Uh, she sees CL, CL run in, and so she has her gun trained, you know, thinking that something obviously was chasing CL. So that is, uh, she's readying her action for whatever comes around the corner. Yeah, one of us. Well, Anson, remember, Anson was in the same boat that you guys are in. She was found in a, um, in a low berth as well. So she's not out to get you. Telford... Hmm. Telford is going to come over here with his med pack and be ready 
in case Sale or Anson is injured. <clears throat> and Corey is sitting in the back of the um, container, and he is fiddling around with his portable computer, which he's using to drive the um, the, the tool sack work bot. And he calls out that the tool sack, or he says the tool sack is down because his feed just went staticky. Um, they get your computer out of here because it'll attract them too. Right. That that is a good point. And so he immediately shuts down the computer and he runs to here. And he throws the computer into the fire over here. Can I just take the battery out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Bo Cephas make a make a No, nah, we'll do it when we get to your turn. You're going to learn a little something about um, about how about how electromagnetics affect them. Uh, Sarda, what would you like to do? So, like I said, you saw Sale run run between you and George and run into the container like something was chasing her. Yeah, but I mean, I there there aren't any in my line of arc, my arc of fire. Right. So, I'm I'm just going to keep waiting until one is. Okay, so you're you're continuing to ready I'm, in action. I'm, I'm not leaving this container. <laughs> and... <laughs> Do I look like I had an aneurysm in the last five minutes? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not a combatant, really. George, what would you like to do? <clears throat> okay, um, I'm thinking that it's going to be about time to run for cover pretty soon. This whole thing is just getting a little bit old out here. I did not, um, I did not but... Now, this thinker guy right here that's kind of at the bottom, if I can I ping him, you see the pinker, thinker guy there? Hold on. Uh, sorry, I evidently... I thought I'd missed one of these. There we go. So, which guy? Um, the one right at the bottom. In yes. Fire who was probing that? Yes. Okay. I'm pretty much um, very sure that I do not want to be out here any longer. Right. I don't. So I'd like to take a pot shot at the thinker, and then I'm going to join uh, my cohorts in the in the cargo container of safety. Okay. So I'm just going to roll the hit. You know, I hate using up ammo, too. I don't, we don't have a lot of it. So on the thinker... Oh, that's going to be a 6 plus 1 is 7 plus 1 is 8. So that, eight, no extra damage. That is a hit. Okay, and... Oh, you got to be kidding me. So on four dice, um, that thinker is going to take six points of damage. Okay. <laughs> Not kidding. I rolled two ones and two twos. Ugh. <laughs> it's like brutal. Yeah, that that's not good. Um, well, I mean, it's good, but it's it's better than zero. Yeah, it's better than zero. So it's not a complete wasted shell. But and I think I'm going to um, I'm just going to duck right in here and. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So the wait here. We'll, we'll we'll hold them at the gate. There we go. The thinker um, doesn't like the fact that he just got shot for sure. That's good. Take that thinker. He's going to. Come up here, and he's going to take one D. Ooh, he took five from the fire. Nice. Uh, 
And this thinker, <coughs> he's going to be like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And he's going to take 1D. Ooh, he took 5 from the fire. Ouch. Yeah, the fire was good to hold them off for a while, but they're all just finding ways through, so... They're coming through softened up and attack. We, we have limited bullets, so any damage the fire does is gravy. That's true. And if we keep rolling damage like uh, George does, um, we're going to need all the rounds we can get. So at the rear of the cargo container, you can hear... And you can see the the rear car, uh, rear container doors kind of uh, being rattled back and forth, like something's trying to figure out how to open those doors. Um, they're of course uh, locked with with bars, but something is trying to figure them out. Something's fiddling with them. Okay. The feeders. <clears throat> This feeder is going to move over here to guard his thinker. And this feeder is going to kind of move over here. And the this feeder, then it, the sound of the doors rattling back and forth as something is fiddling with them changes. And something is just bashing at the doors with no thought as to whether or not it can get the doors open. It just is clawing and headbutting the doors, trying in an attempt to bash them open. Failing miserably, but still making the attempt, need, you know, regardless. This guy is going to come this way, and Sarda, you get a shot. Now, um, you also get a plus four because it comes around the corner is like right in front of you. Okay. Wait, what? It I, it didn't add the four. It, so it actually is a 12. Okay. I, I, I type plus four in the mod, I should just left this four. So that that is a hit with plus four to damage. And I, <clears throat> I don't know how much damage the revolver does, is it? It does. Three D minus three. Correct. Okay. So three D plus one then. Yes, yeah, it is a net three D plus one. Holy crap. <laughs> oh no. Okay. I, I don't. I don't think that's correct. It's not a slash. Is that a slash roll? And so it, you oh. said roll three D. Yeah, you three D six plus. There one. we go. I knew, I knew I did something wrong. Uh, so nine damage. Okay. There you go. That's that's better. That that doesn't. Uh, therefore, saying my soul left my body. So they're going. How can I even roll a three on three D? I'm using those special dice. Uh, okay. Alright, so you shoot this feeder, and it is uh, clearly grievously wounded, but it doesn't go down. And now, it is really pissed off. Bocephus, cool. uh, Bocephus, make a telepathy plus your side check. That's an eight. Okay, so you're with you're getting your limited empathic uh, contact with this thinker, kind of. Um, I well, I don't want to go so far as to say that it is a link, but you you are getting some impressions from the thinker, and those impressions are that when the thinker thinks about or is thinking about proving site number nine 
what you're seeing as far as an image goes is an image of underground electrical pipes where those electrical wires go and in some cases a layout of for instance where the two tool sack work bots are and you're still seeing in in the thinker's mind both robots even though you know that one of those robots has left it is it is being attacked off in the brush by other by other creatures but in the thinker's mind that's where it's supposed to be so therefore it must still be there the thinker's smart enough that it's able to discern that wait a minute it's not here anymore the feeders are not so in a lot of cases you're seeing feeders when you poke your head out and what you see beyond the firewall you are seeing feeders um, going to for instance the er, the location where that robot was and and investigating the ground and attacking the ground because that's where they think the robot should be so essentially what had happened was when that emp blast went off it imprinted on on the creepers minds all of the electromagnetics of this camp kind of like a map you guys are essentially just gravy so they they're agitated by the electromagnetics because they were woken up by it this is their map of the area and oh hey now that we're awake there's a food source too <clears throat> happy to accommodate them <laughs> yes so Bocephus what would you like to do well I've got to I've got to keep going on on this thinker here because I'm thinking the thinker will give commands to its underlings if I really do my job but then there's this guy right out front and, yeah uh, he's a problem yeah Yeah, I, I don't think he's going to make the, the, the way. Um, okay. Uh, how about, you see this little thinker right here? Yeah. All right. What if he thought that she looked really tasty? Who looked really tasty? Sale? Uh, yes. Ooh. I like that. Okay. Let's do that. Let's make that thinker think that Sael is extra good protein nourishment and, and perhaps might have new healing powers. Wholesome, loving, you know, <laughs> food source. Full, right of, there. full of tea and crumpets. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. So, this will be my last time getting a, a psionic PM based on that because my side will get drop to an eight you, you're getting to, to nosebleed territory well yeah I'm, I'm starting to lose some side points i'm gonna start you know going to something else but hey that is a success okay uh, it's just one one above my thing but yeah that's, that's what i'm gonna try to do is let that thinker think that you know sal is is the most excellent food source here <laughs> okay that that's interesting choice um okay did you want to m do anything with your minor action no i am precisely where i want to be uh because if we have a tallywhacker moment i have to be able to stick her with this syringe okay so you know if someone calls the go team you know my job is to go stick her with this syringe that i've got ready so it's it's kind of ready to kind of cuff behind my back a little bit, and I've got a pistol in my other hand to look ready to shoot. But I'm not shooting. Okay. Yet. Sal sees this feeder, of course, <clears throat> and she kind of panics. Um, and she, being the wonderful person that she is, I mean, she is right next to being Mother Teresa. She
So, <laughs> so Sam sees the feeder and kind of shrieks and something about, you know, oh my God, it's coming right for me. And she grabs Corey and shoves him right out in front of the feeder. The young kid. <laughs> now... I would say that um, I mean Sarda can't really do anything to stop him from getting shoved out there because if see then we're going to get into D&D &D territory so like if Sarda decided to use a reaction to grab Corey and shove him back then the feeder would get a reaction to I mean, we'd, we'd start getting into the whole attacks of opportunity. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I, so I I'm not going to do that. I, I, I wouldn't bother. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Corey, uh, you were a good kid, Corey. Sorry about that. <laughs> Corey's useful. This is it. it's, it's, it's easier to shoot them when they're eating yeah. things. That's yeah. true. That's true. In theory, once, he, the the once the feeder makes its kill, it'll start dragging it off. Because it, it is a feeder. I'm thinking the name itself would mean it's going to go feed the thinker. Anson um, sees this and she says, You bitch. And she shoots at Sayel. Really? Right. That's that not helpful. That's not helpful at all. <laughs> and hits with a 13. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to yell save rounds. Yeah, save your rounds for the bugs, not each other. Besides, when the Imperium does the full investigation, your ammo in her body is not going to look good. Right. And she ends up taking one point of strength damage and all of her endurance. And Sail, <laughs> Sail, uh, Anson gets a pretty good shot, and Sail is um, takes a, a hit to the torso. Looks like it probably, you know, from from the two doctors' point of views, looks like it probably missed the major organs. But she is she is hold and uh, and bleeding, and Sail just has this this look of shock on her face that Anson, who is the fatalist and the the quietest of your party that came in, she's shocked that that Anson shot her. The killers. Are now going to start to act. This killer. Let's see. Going to move there. This killer. I was going to move there. Telford. Um, Telford pushes his way through and uh, is like, oh my god, Sale, are you alright? And he is going to attempt to administer first aid. Um, <laughs> it fails. Um, Sale is still uh, dumping blood. And Corey... 
I don't remember. Did Corey have a gun? I don't think he did. I think that uh, you guys figured it was probably safer if he didn't. Because he is pretty inept. Yeah, he was just numb. Yeah. Not, not the guy. <laughs> yeah, no. He... <clears throat> I think he's going to make a sanity check. <laughs> and uh, fails by one, taking three points of sanity. And he is kind of looking at this. So, Sarda, you see Corey just kind of looking at this uh, feeder. And you can see that his skin has turned white. And he's just kind of in the process of like sobbing mumbling and maybe accepting his fate kind of situation so sarda what would you like to do so i'll yell at him to get back in the back of the container and uh if that doesn't take an action i will aim at this feeder right here and take a shot go for it you get a plus one for aiming Uh, gun combat one. It's an eleven. So that is that plus three to damage. That is. So just a raw three d six. So ten more damage. Ooh. Too. So you blast this feeder in the face, and it goes down. And I yell at him to get in the back of the container. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we don't need you with no weapon out front. He is going to... Um, he's able to move his minor action um, like that far, and he, he just collapses. He doesn't even make it to all the way to the back of the container. He just collapses once he's inside. George, what would you like to do? It's probably for the best. We don't really need him back in the back if the other two get through that way. No, <laughs> right? no, no. So we've got Corey in safe. So everybody seems to have that front of the container pretty good. Um, George would probably like to go maybe check on the back to make sure that it's secure. Okay. I, I just, you know what? They're converging on the open door. Yeah, they're converging on the open door. Yes. That's eleven that's eleven meters there. Yeah, there's okay, four so... of them there's four of them converging on the front door. So essentially from where George is, two minor actions will get you to the back door, and you could use that, that third minor action to basically investigate that back door and uh, make sure that it's secure. Yeah, I'm going to go actually yeah, I'm gonna do exactly that. They're converging on the front door, but there's a lot of people that are at the front door right now who seem to be able to handle that. Yeah, and there's at least two or three snacks up there, so... Yeah, there's a lot of snacks up there, including... <laughs> I'm um, just worried that half of them are shooting each other. That's the Yeah, point. and you know, that's 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 probably a problem. Um, I'm going to also um, let them know, especially... It, it's Anson that's shooting at Sayal, right? Right. Okay, let Anson know to save your bullets for the bugs and not each other, or we're all going to be dinner for bugs. <laughs> and then I'm going to run and make sure that this back door is secure and that I don't think that anything can get in. Um, just because that kind of makes me nervous. The last thing I would need is for bugs. Like, we're, we'd be essentially just hamburger in here. Like, there'd be no escape out of this at all. Make a mechanic plus intellect check. Mechanic plus intellect. Well, good thing I have mechanic zero. Hey, look at that box cars. That's going to be a fourteen. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so so you uh, so these these cargo containers were and you know before you moved them <clears throat> they were being used as um, makeshift garages and workshops 
for the vehicles. And so, naturally, there was some modification made. And one of the modifications was that you can lock the doors from the inside. And so, uh, you find the mechanism that was basically a couple of welded brackets and a crossbar that you can shut, that you can lock this thing even further so that even if they get the, the cross bolts out on the outside, they still can't open these doors unless they were to take the hinges completely off. And okay. I mean, they don't have opposable thumbs. So that was what I was kind of going for. Cause I, you know, I, I think the thinker bugs, you know, are a little bit smarter. So I was kind of concerned that they would be able to figure out a lock. I know my own dog can figure out really stupid crap that I would never think that she would know how to do. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, okay. it, honestly, the thinker that found the shotgun that Jack went for, um, if it had fingers, it may have been able to figure out how to fire the shotgun. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I feel we're secure. I can go back to the front line. The thinkers... Hmm. Well, this thinker. He's going to move there. And that thinker. He's still trying to figure out the door. And this thinker is going to um, give his spidery orders and uh, that's what they're going to do. The feeder <clears throat> sweet. That feeder <laughs> is going to... Uh, I don't like it when you say that. That's unnerving. <laughs> I wasn't sure that he was going to make it all that way, but he did. And so he's going to attempt to nom on uh, sale. I'm okay with that. I figured you might be. Oh, man. And he misses. Um, she dodges out of the way just as his mandibles clamp shut. And uh, that's what he does. This feeder, he's just, this feeder's dumb. He's just going to keep bashing his head into the door, um, really to no avail. Um, it makes a lot of noise, but it's scarier to listen to than it really is. Um, no, Cephas, what would you like to do? Well... Looks like they're gnawing on CL real well. Is, Trying is, to, right? Is and she still got this this long arm, uh, long gun in her hand, I guess. Yes. Yeah. All right. Then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and and the killers are about to come around. Uh, the killers really make me nervous. They've got that name that says, like, I'm dangerous. They also have so the scorpion tail with the stinger on it that injects like that either. the poison. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Okay. I'm just going to kind of kind of move. Uh, how many meters is this? Yeah, so I can just kind of move right into here uh, without using too much right oh i gotta put it on the right thing sorry i do that all the yeah. time <laughs> yeah there we go i'm just gonna kind of move to the other side so when the tally whacker moment comes it comes and uh no I, I i'm gonna can i just kind of hold my shot from when this guy right here gets within my line of sight so i can i can take a revolver shot at him yeah then that's i mean what i'll do i mean if you if you don't care about uh rolling snake eyes 
you could technically take a shot at this feeder right here if you wanted to. The only reason why I bring up snake eyes is that I would say that on a snake eyes, you would hit CL. I understand. Uh, but, I mean, uh, not that you really care about CL. <laughs> No. Are we are we concerned about hitting sale? <laughs> Not now. No, but uh, you know, kind of one of my thinking is is that as, as these creatures kind of line up on this this front line up here, that that might be the time to go ahead and trip the log trap. That's true. Where, where George is just kind of standing there, uh, you know, uh, and and I'm thinking that see, you know, uh, Sayal will be a great bait. You know, there's a good cluster of NPCs right over there. That you know, I'm really fine with all of them dying. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, kind of wait for the the killer guy uh, to, you know, come. I might, might not even go that much. I, I just want to have a, a nice, kind of jump right here behind, so I can, still have a nice clear view. Right, so, so that you so can I release the trap. <laughs> right, right, and and so I don't endanger. You know any of my friends? I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get right there and kind of stand next to Corey. Okay. Like I'm kind of defending him, and when that killer rounds, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot this pistol. Okay. Sal. I think she's gonna do more of this. Same. Oh, but wait. Hmm. What does that put her at? Yeah, she's gonna try it anyway. She fails. Well, we don't know if she fails or not. Shit, she doesn't fail. She, um, this time, gra grabs Telford and shoves him out and then runs. She's just not a good person. Back here. And in the process, drops her rifle. <clears throat> so her rifle's like right up here. On the on the floor, <clears throat> but she shoves Telford out in front of this feeder, uh, you know, once again to save herself, and then runs back into towards the middle of the container next to Corey. Anson, hmm. Anson is going to. Now she's got something else. She was going to run to try and uh, console Corey. Because Anson is actually a pretty good person. But instead, she's going to take a shot at the feeder. And miss miserably. Um, that her, her not having any gun combat does not help her um, at all. So Anson's down two rounds. And the killers. So, and I'm trying to remember. So Sarda was waiting for something to come into range again? Not this time? No, I just finished off that uh, feeder. On my turn, I finished off the feeder that was here. Right. So I don't have any held actions or delay. Okay, so that feeder is going to come there. That feeder is going to go there. Uh, or, I'm sorry, killer is going to go there. The killer yeah, is I'm going... Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. The killer is going to make do an I, attack... Do I get my shot at the killer since it came around? Oh, you've got yes, you do. Action. Yes, you do. I, I knew one of you had a ready to action. Yes, you do. I got a six. That is a miss. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, that sucks, but I lost a bullet. There we go. I was shooting at the killer. No. no. Yay. Hey, man. You get a gold star. At least you tried. 
That's all. That's all get a participation trophy. That's right. That's right. We needed our we needed our door kicker. You got two techies yeah. and a police officer. Yeah, but George is next. He could pull the cord. So this killer, um, its tail whips forward and stabs Telford in the chest. That's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, the yeah, it's he takes one point of damage, which isn't terrible. I rolled really poorly. Um, maybe five. Hold on here. But, and here's the but, let's see here, what is the poison? Difficulty is, one, oh, he has to make an endurance, a difficult endurance check at minus one. Ooh. think he did it though. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, he did not. So he takes an additional 1D of four points of Dude, that sucks. He takes four points of dex. Automatically. Wah, wah. Then on <clears throat> Sarda, it is going to try to do the same thing. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to this. Oh my god, he misses terribly. Sarda, this the stinger comes and you dodge, and the stinger's like clang, 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 you know, into the side of the. Um, into the side of the cargo container, just narrowly missing your head. And it it just, you know, it's dripping this vile toxin uh, on the container, and uh, but he misses you completely. Uh, in fact, he, to let you know, he got a whole whopping five. All right. I knew you'd like the sound of that. Telford, um, Telford's not doing well. Telford is going to... Run the f away! This game's been ridiculous. The day, the night where we all had to roll nonstop recon checks, our recon expert was missing, and <laughs> right? t- tonight tonight we're missing our Aslan and our, our, our army. Yes, our, your our Marine Aslan. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not a shooter. I, I have like literally slug one. I'm a driver. Have... I'm a driver. <laughs> I, drive people around. I have I have J Drive four and and uh, sensors four. What well, you have to do, yeah, George, you're going to get a good kill count if you pull that rope. So whenever I hear somebody um, complain about, and I see this a lot, people that aren't familiar or haven't really played Traveler much, they've looked over how characters are made. And whenever they complain, well, yeah, but you can't, you know, you can't uh, get a concept of a character in your head and then, you know, create that character. I'm like, well, first of all, yes, you can. There is an option for that. Two, I said, that's, you're you're missing the point. That's not what Traveler is about. Traveler is about taking perfectly ordinary people and putting them in extraordinary situations. And I'm like, you know, uh, just like real life, you, 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 play with the hand, with the hand of cards that you're dealt <laughs> you know uh Corey I'm trying to think of what Corey you know I don't know how much Corey how much of this Corey is going to take <laughs> I mean, nothing nothing Corey's fine honestly Corey runs back here to his gear bag 
and starts working on something in the duffel bag. And you can hear him, you know, he's got wire cutters, clipping wires, he's plugging stuff in. And uh, that's what Corey's doing. But you can't really see what he's doing because it's inside this duffel. He just unzipped the duffel bag, stuck his hands in the duffel bag, and he's he's messing around. Great. It's probably more electronics. Sort of. It's probably those explosives. Sort of. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to shoot the one in my face. Yeah, that's a good uh, idea. That, uh, I think that is an excellent I'm plan. I'm going to shoot at yeah. it anyway. I'm gonna. You get it a plus four because I mean it is point blank. That is a ten, right? Yeah. Five, yeah. All right. So that's plus two damage. Yes. So that ends up being plus minus one, right? Because they're normally three d six minus three. Correct. Eight damage to it. Ooh. Nice. And this might be stupid, but I'm going to move away from it. No, that's uh, a good idea. To stand on top of the rifle that someone who knows what they're doing should be using. Okay. Okay. No, it's stupid because I'm moving in front of two others. So right, get all, all hey, three of them on the me. <laughs> George McDuff, what would you like to do? All right, the McDuster is going to try to go and save the day. So I'm going to move up to here for my minor action. Okay. And then I'm going to open up right on the one in front of Sarda because I don't want him to get eaten. Okay. And we're just going to... So this feeder? Yeah, I'm going to just take out that feeder right there. Okay. So far I've been good, so that's... Well, seven plus two is... Um, I rolled a lot of sevens. Um, that's a that's a nine. So plus one to damage you hit. Yeah. Oh, better damage, better damage. Come on. Five, five. Fourteen plus the one is. Are you are you using points of damage? Yeah. Is that the shotgun? Yeah, that's the shotgun. I did fifteen <laughs> points of damage altogether. Does it, does it does it have burst? I mean, I, I don't know if it. I don't know. No, they're just regular shotguns. It's just gotcha. a regular shotgun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was. Good. Yeah, the only trait it's got is bulky. But this uh, feeder essentially explodes. There, there's nothing left of that feeder. Uh, hey, okay. Can I can I pick up that shotgun and throw it back there, or just kind of before, or no, the the rifle? Well, sort of standing on the rifle. Okay. That's, yeah, because yeah. I think. We're going to run out of... I think I've used up three shells already. I got three left in the shotgun and 12 extras. Everybody else has some. So I think we're going to have a lot more feeders throughout the night than we anticipate. So Yeah, I just have... Uh, I've fired my pistol three times. And so I, that's all. It's, it's a revolver, though, if I recall. So it's got two or three more rounds. I don't know how many rounds are in them. Six. There were six in each of them. Yeah. And I think everybody's got... One set of reloads. Is that that was? Oh, I, did, I didn't hear that. Okay. Yeah. I just thought I had the gun. Yeah. No. Everybody. It, it's got six rounds in it, and everybody should have uh, another six in a speed loader. Uh, that's what the thinkers are gonna do. They're they're waving little pom poms for the killers. Yay. Uh, the last feeder. Oh wait. No, he's for a thinker. He's he's not the smartest of the three, um, which means that feeder is going to stay right where he's at, trying to headbutt the door. Now, Sarda out of uh, and George out of the entrance. You can see around the corner that <clears throat> there are some of feeders that are. Um, they have dug up some of the electrical lines and are literally chewing or attempting to chew through the electrical cables that they've dug up from the ground. And you can see that just beyond the firelight. Well, better better electrical cables than one of us, so... Right. Truth. <laughs> Truth. Have fun. 
Bocephus, what would you like to do? Pull the rope. Okay. You pull the rope. There's four of them just all right there in the zone. I mean, that just seems like the smartest thing to do right there. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay. You pull the rope <clears throat> and you, these logs come down off of the top and pretty, I mean, they're not completely dead, but um, they are effectively out of the fight. These uh, these four are crushed under these logs to the point where they are busted up enough that they are not going to be um, any a threat any longer. Um, and they probably won't survive for too long. So you've uh, your log trap effectively cleared the entrance to your to your uh, container here. But then for the that's that gives me the highest kill count, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> that still counts as one. I know you were waiting for me to pull that. I'm like, no, I'll let you do it. I mean, come on. Uh, that's no, it's it's a team. Effort. So the, pulling on the pulling on the rope was just a minor action. You've got two more minor actions or one significant action. I just want to step over here and stab this chick. Uh, and, and I'm gonna say, oh man, you're hurt. Let me take care of you real quick. And I'm you'll yank that rope. And then, uh, you know, I've kind of got this syringe kind of stealth. I'm just going to go ahead and give her some of that goody, good, good uh, stuff from the boat, from the ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can uh, you can attempt to do that on your next turn, because that would be a significant action. I assume that you're uh, attempting to make it look like you're administering first aid, right? Yes. In fact, uh, you know, I have... I have some stealthy stealth about me a little. I, I could even, you know, attempt a stealthy roll to make her think that I'm, you know, not using the 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 medicine, but really using my med kit. I'm just going to kind of, you know, act like I'm, I'm fiddling with my med kit right now as I'm approaching her, you know, and I'm like, hey, hey, you're hurt. Let me let me take care of that. You know, why don't you ruminate for a moment while I take care of your wounds? Okay, go ahead and make a... Um... Make a persuasion plus yeah. uh, charm check. Okay. Oh, I actually have persuade. Hell yeah! <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's and, still that we actually have. Yeah, no doubt. And I got a charm of ten, so this won't be bad. I'll get a plus two. This. An eleven. Okay. So she, um, she kind of opens up or lifts up her shirt, opens up her jacket, lifts up her shirt, and you can see that this, there is a bullet wound through and through, um, <clears throat> that, uh, that, that she, she's offering for you to, um, perhaps stitch up or, or oh, bandage or Oh, hell yeah, I'm going to take care of that, and, you know, God. You know, if, if you'd have been one of them six-nippled species, you know, you might have lost one. <laughs> <laughs> Anson uh, is going to run over to Corey. And Corey hands her something. And Anson runs over to... Oh, wait, that guy's gone runs back over to Sarta and she hands Sarta a makeshift bomb made out of mining explosives. And you see, Sarta, as, you, as she hands it to you, you look over her shoulder and you can see Corey's got his hands in the duffel bag and he looks like he's making another one. I'm like, I don't know what to do with these, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's just a dex roll to throw. <laughs> uh, assuming it does works, I mean, I don't know how it's rigged. It's got a timer. Do I have to worry? Is this going to blow up now? Essentially, yeah. I mean, because you wanted to stay away from uh, from electromagnetic devices as much as possible, this has just got a good old fashioned egg timer on it. Is it already started? No, I mean, I, no, I, I no. Do, I was gonna say I don't have any targets. Right. No. She she hands you one, and then. Uh, or hands you it, and then she runs back over to Corey, waiting for the next one. All right. 
how, how big an explosion will this be? Uh, it is. Dun, 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 dun. It's, tempted, not, it's not as big as you might think. I'm tempted to plant them in the ground and shoot at them. Uh, because I don't really want to have to try to throw that in combat. So, <laughs> it is definitely not a grenade. Um, the option... Uh, and so we kind of discussed it a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... So the grenade, um, because it was so difficult to make, um, was kind of ruled out. And so these are um, are better. So uh, they are a bomb that does 5D damage and blast 4. So it, it has a blast radius of 4 meters and, um, and it does 5D damage. Now, 4 meters is quite a while, quite a ways. Yeah, well, yeah, and like I said, it's... It's not as bad as, like, some of the, you know, like a fragmentation grenade or anything like that, but four meters is pretty good. So, okay. that was Anson Telford. Telford is going to... Oh, wait. Telford's got a bigger problem. Telford needs to make another endurance check. Oh, he's damaged. And he fails for... Oh, no. Telford. Telford falls unconscious. Uh, he, like, he starts to say something, he starts rambling something that is completely incoherent, and then his eyes roll up into the back of his head, and he just goes, Badunk! falls face first. Uh, he's effectively done. Corey's making another bomb. Sarda, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to slide the gun to Corey and say, why don't you try this? Uh, and I'll pick up the rifle. Okay. And I don't know if sliding the gun is a minor or a... I would say it's a minor action. Okay. And I'm going to basically move to here to see if I, I see anything around the corner. Okay. So you can hear the, the sound of banging on the back of the um, container coming from back here. And this container is how tall? It's like eight feet or... I mean, I don't... Mm, this is, is a taller? pretty big container because they were using it as a garage. Um, right, okay. So I would say it's probably ten feet tall. Okay. Because standing on top of it might be a good idea now that we've got the log trap set. Can we not just shut the front doors and just hold out overnight? You, too, right? like could, that's... you could do that. That is an option. And you know that uh, they can be locked from the inside. Yeah. Like the, uh, the, the problem with that is that we have party members who have run out. Uh, <laughs> that's right? their fucking problem. Jack. Yeah, that's, that's Jack. <laughs> but I mean, he did, the player didn't make that right, decision. No, no. Right? So locking him out for the night's probably not cool is all I'm saying. We could let him in. <laughs> let me in, let me in, let me in. No. Hey, hey, he can always knock. Yeah. Yeah, if he fights his way through all of the bugs that are, you know, crawling all over the container, I, you know, I just figure we'll keep, we've still got a lot of ammo. Sure. But, uh, there's other places to go too, right? Like there's buildings that are, he could. He buildings could that have in. electronics. In. True. That's true. We, we've we've tried to create an electronics free zone here, and they're still coming after us. Right, and and we dragged this container into a new location, so it wouldn't be one that would have 
tabling or anything underneath it. Well, at this point, the the general feeling that you get is um, this is mostly they have realized that oh look, there's a snack pack over here that we could eat on. Um, not that they're drawn to it for any other reason other than that you are meaty blood bags. They're not drawn because of electromagnetics to this. They just realize that the thinkers realized right away that, oh, hey, look, there's a box full of cookies over here. Let's go eat it all. Uh, so, yeah, you can hear, you know, they're still back here trying to get in. Um, and they're not being, obviously, the feeder's not being quiet about it. Um, I don't know. Did you want to just aim in that direction? What do you, what, what's your, I, I think that's all three of my actions. Uh, I slid the gun, picked up the rifle. I moved around the corner. Okay. That is true. George McDuff. What would you like to do? <coughs> uh, you know, even though Jack ran out, George is going to sort of, can you get back in here and we can just like close the door. If Jack comes back, then we'll take care of that. When he comes in, we'll let him in. But we can lock ourselves in here and we're safe. You're not safe out there. Uh, I, don't, I don't see any threats at the moment. So I don't, you know, I mean, there's obviously the two at the back door. But I mean, being locked inside overnight without light may not be any safer than defending this front. It's just like, I think eventually we're going to run out of ammunition. That's true. We have a long night ahead of us. Eventually, we're going to run out of ammunition. Yeah, I mean, you... At this point, we you probably have another out, 10 hours. <laughs> we have people outside of the container. Allies that are outside the container that we want to at least make certain are safe before we just seal ourselves in and hope for the best. So you guys can hear another to the south off the map, off of this map, uh, towards the... Um, the other buildings, you can hear another couple of shotgun blasts go off. Uh, I'll, I'll yell out, Jack, head back. Okay. And George, uh, are you just staying inside the container waiting, or do you want to position no, no, yourself? You know or? what? I don't like the idea of sort of, even though I disagree with it, um, I'm going to step out, and if anything comes even close... Uh, or maybe we see Jack running back and I get a chance to actually shoot another one to get it off Jack's back because I know that they can now move faster than, than us. Um, well, you, you have enough movement that you could hypothetically walk, check around the side, and then walk back in, right? You yeah, could but walk to here and then walk back into the container, ending yeah. your turn inside the container, and yeah. at least making sure that it's clear on that side. Yeah, I'll keep this side clear. Okay keep that side clear okay and uh osephus can make sure that everybody that we don't want to have around has a nice nap <laughs> we can make sure that oh look sale just got an infection oh that's terrible oh that's terrible i mean as far as i'm concerned right now i am safer than i am inside the container because sale is unlikely to be able to shoot me that's true so this thinker finally decides that he is not going to unlock this door and I would say that George you get a shot okay so yeah this is this is one of my worries us being outside is going to attract them okay I will shoot that guy then okay I don't have a choice otherwise he's just going to come at me oh good good for me Six and a four, that's ten, plus one, and dexterity plus one is twelve. Okay, so that is a plus four to damage. I'm going to need that. Oh, why am I rolling so crappy? 
that's that's the way it is almost every one of my games. People roll you know, really I, great for a to hit and then roll none but ones for damage. You are exactly. getting plus you are getting plus four to the damage for that. Yeah, I know. That's gonna be uh, six well, three twos for six plus five for eleven plus four for fifteen points of damage. Ouch. Yeah, that and wasn't that is, terrible. And that well, you know what? It's the plus four, right? I mean, uh, out of ammunition. So, he, yeah, that hurt him a lot, and he rethink being smart. He rethinks that, and he's like, "Yeah, no." Um, the feeder. The feeder. Comes down this way and. Sarda, you get a shot since you're covering that side. This is just a trick to use up ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> and we're falling for it. Sorry, I, I, I screwed up the rolls twice, so it is a 12 that I rolled. Okay. Uh, and I don't know how much damage does a rifle do. This is the first I've uh, used one. That one does 3D damage, so that's a plus 4. So it's 3D plus 4. 18 damage. Yikes. So this feeder... Yikes. Wow. Yeah. Nice. That feeder is no more. And the rifle also has the scope trait, which right, but that's a that's just, use a round. It's an action, right? To use the... um, it just basically means that you're not at a uh, minus two for over a hundred. What is a hundred and yeah, hundred and twenty meters, hundred and fifty. I think it's a hundred and twenty meters. If I can get up on top of the container, it might be useful to cover for Jack if he's running across. Okay, Bocephus. You can go ahead and make your uh, medic plus intellect or education check. Okay. Now I'm I'm shooting the the go go juice. I'm not right. Not really. Yeah. Okay. I was just clarification, but uh, yeah, I, I love using my medic skills and my intellect. So this would be at plus four. Okay. Yeah. One, two, six plus four. Just, just, keep, well. just keep in mind that if she dies, they're going to probably do an autopsy if it's not the obvious that she was torn apart by a bug. So they're going to find that she's been drugged and shot by a friend so far. All right. Well, I mean, you know, it's it, right now this is the best thing I got to kind of ensure that she stops trying to attack us. So she... Uh... Oddly enough, you witness that she starts to babble and say things incoherently and before she passes out, too, just like Telford did. As, as, I, as I inject it in her, you know, I, I'm going to go, I bet your skills are really valuable as she kind of lays on <laughs> down. Yeah, and she, you know, she's kind of staring at you as she, as you say that. And you see her pupils go wide, and then she's unconscious. That's great. Uh, so Sam's now unconscious. Is that like is that the drug that they injected us that we just injected into her? Is there? You know what? I'm I'm not there. I'm just gonna speculate. I'm just thinking out loud. <laughs> uh, with is there anything that you want to do with your minor action? Um, well, you know, I've kind of done this. I, you know, if I can begin a pat down and see if she has more ammo for that rifle. Ooh, make a make a investigate plus intellect check. I do not have investigate, but I've got some intellect. So. I'm going to say that you can make it with a boon because she is unconscious and she's not going to be able to 
really um, stop you. Right. So, what is that? Seven minus two is five? Roll the five. Uh, yeah, you don't, you find, you do find something. Um, you find in her pocket, um, you find a key card, uh, for a storage locker at, on Tobias, at Tobias Spaceport. Okay, well, you know, that, that's, that's, that'll be fun to play with later. But, uh, Hopefully I, it's I all. Rep, yeah. I don't wrap my turn up. Hopefully it's all of our stuff. <laughs> uh, Anson. What is she going to do? Anson goes running out, and as she runs past, she goes, Nighty night, bitch. And she... Goes up here. And when she gets there, she gets down on one knee and kind of digs a, a little hole and starts digging a little hole. And she's got one of these bombs with her. Okay. So Anson's the cool one. Yeah, you know, she she's a, a, a bit emo. She's a bit goth. She uh, um, she's fatalistic, a bit of a nihilist. Um, she doesn't expect anybody's going to survive this night, but um, she seems to be doing her best to try and help. Corey is going to make one last bomb. Serta, you uh, hear an explosion to the south, and uh, you can see uh, Jack and and Riker running back towards the the firewall coming towards you cool is what would you like to do are you just going to cover them or uh yeah i'll move to here uh, stay down the fire and basically provide cover okay uh, if I I see something that's in between them and if, if there's one in between them. Okay. George, what would you like to do? Well, there still is this... But I, but I will shout out. They're on their way back. Okay. Is this a killer one right up still in the corner here? Oh. I don't like the idea of that. Yeah, there's still a killer up there. Uh, but you know what? I forgot about him, so I'm going to say he's not there. So, okay. no, he's not there. I'm literally just going to keep an eye out for, for Jack. I'm not leaving the corner here. Um, I am going to make sure that um, Anson... So, I'm going to ready my, my shotgun, kind of keeping an eye in both directions. So, if that critter comes around that corner again, because I know there's still one back there. Okay. The one that I already previously shot. Um, you know what? Screw this. Um, I keep forgetting I have a hatchet. Can I move to the corner here and take my hatchet and try to hack this thing? You could, yeah. Let's do that. All right. Let's, let, let, let's close the quarters. Let's be brave. I'm a police officer. i got to protect the innocent like Anson so she can bury this bomb and hopefully blow up something bigger oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> um so do I get like a bonus for surprising this creature <laughs> uh, could it be like a really big bonus <laughs> <laughs> probably not all right then. Uh, it looks like um, I rolled a six. Okay, so you miss. Uh, do you have? But we could say we hit, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is a miss. Uh, okay. 
Fuck. <laughs> I knew my luck was going to run out the stupidest times. That's what you get for wearing a Stormtrooper shirt, man. The yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, that's, you know, I never even thought about that tonight, but I've hit with my shotgun every time. Well, I mean, it could be worse. You could be wearing, you know, a Star Trek red shirt. Hmm. I have a gold shirt. I never wear a red shirt. So the thinker tries to to clamp back at you with its mandibles, and it misses. Um, That's fair. Bocephus, what would you like to do? Uh, if it looks like Sael is just out of the bit, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I guess, I guess really the doctor there is, is needs medical attention. Yeah, he he's not doing well. Um, right now he's just unconscious, but you you know that people who have been hit by the stinger on those killers, um, they die. So you're gonna need to do something for him. Okay. I'm going to whip out my trusty med bag and see if I can patch him up a little bit. Maybe, maybe try to stabilize him. Okay. Uh, if I have some anti venoms, you know, uh, I'll I'm use them. But I'm sure that uh, some kind of anti venom uh, would be a part of any med kit. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what I'm going to do. So I guess this is a med check. Yes, med med plus intellect or education your cho your choice. That's an eleven. Okay. So that'd be at, what three points of healing? Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe good stuff to come of it. I don't know. So you are able to rouse him, <clears throat> and. Uh, he um, he comes he comes too, but he is not making any sense. Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna assume that he's got the effects of this stuff. It I'm thinking you know when his memory returns, uh, you know he'll, you know he might he might have some time lapse blackout, but for the most I, I'm thinking if he survives he'll eventually be okay, or he won't. Whatever. Right. Yeah, he might be a happy little tree laying by the side of the brook. So. Give me one second. I'll be right back, guys. Okay. I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, far better than I would have thought with my combat skills. Yeah. Oh, man. Not doing too badly. But then again, I think he's being generous with us. Right. Well, everybody's been, you know, participating. Uh, and everybody's been, you know, effective, at least to some degree. The vac suits. Stuff. The vac yeah. suits definitely are a nice, safe guard if they did land something. Yeah. Ten, ten armor. I mean, yeah. Yeah, at, that's at least... actually, like, really, really nice to have, so... Can't complain about that at all. Right. We should, we should try to hang out and, and, and get Sael up and, and see if we can get the information uh, on where their their pirate people are, or, or and sell them to their own pirates. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. The doctor and uh, Sael. We just, you know, since they're both kind of out of it, you know, we'll just. You know, this here. Here's a medic and a and a wonderful first officer. You could you could put them to use somewhere in your humane slavery ring. That's karma. That's what that is. But we'll probably end up turning them over to the authorities. I get that. 
Oh, if if any of them actually survive, too, right? So. Yeah. Well, that's that is the point. I did kind of stabilize the doctor here, you know. <clears throat> My apologies. Antibiotics not agreeing with me. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. So, yeah, you... So are you. You rouse him, and uh, but he is still completely out of it. Like, he's not making any sense. He's babbling. Uh, um, well, I mean, you know... But at least he's conscious. Yeah. We'll see how it works out, Doctor. I, I won't abandon you. Anson, uh... Buries her bomb, and this one, instead of having a uh, um, an egg timer, it just has, like, a dynamite plunger, and she's running wire. And she comes back and gets inside. She's way too close to the container. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely within the four meters. Oh, wonderful. And Corey makes his last bomb, and he... Uh, he... That's eight. He runs over here and starts doing the same thing. So, Sarda, uh, Jack and Riker catch up with you. And, uh... They tell you that they uh, had led a group of them off back towards, basically around the outside of the camp, and back towards the um, uh, buildings where Jack uh, lit off an ex one of these explosives and killed like five or six of them. Um, and but they're just he says according to what they report that what they're saying is that the camp itself, these things are just tearing the camp apart. Yeah, which is kind of what we expected. So I'm gonna, if they're if they seem to be safe, I'm gonna move back into the shipping container and uh, okay, uh, basically hope that watch cover Corey, I guess. Okay, George, what would you like to do? Well, you know what? Before this thing gets another swing at me, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna use my hatchet on this bug. Okay. Yeah, just get rid of all the bugs in the area for now. Yeah. Oh, that's better. That's an eight. That's a hit. No nine. bonus damage, but it's a hit. No, nope, it's nine altogether, plus one. So plus one. Yeah, so that is two dice plus, we'll say two dice plus three. Huh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so that's going to be uh, five points of damage. Ooh. It is very grievously wounded, but still yeah. moving around. That's five points of damage. That's, that's minor the plus two. Minor action? Uh, minor action will be... Take up a defensive position so I don't step away from this thing and get killed. Okay. So it... It's just me and the bug. That's it. That's all it that matters. It is going to... <laughs> make an attempt to attack you. It hits with an 8. Great. Doing 4D damage. Or, or, I'm sorry, doing uh, 4 points of damage. Now, don't forget, you are in a uh, vac suit with plus 10 protection. So, yep. it doesn't get through your vac suit. I feel very much more secure now than I did before. Uh... Bocephus, you have uh, roused the doctor. Are you going to... Um, I mean, you can't really give him any more uh, first aid, uh, so I don't know if you want to continue to monitor him. What What do you want to do? Um, man, if I got guys just right out there, I, I wonder if I could reload the log trap to some degree. Hmm. Pro is that equipment for that? Right? Yeah, you you it would take it, you couldn't do it by yourself. Right. Well, I mean, there's 
there's Riker, Jack is right there. True. Uh, and, and and Anson could yeah could potentially. yeah and Corey is there. Uh, you know, I mean, it's you know, like right now, I guess I'm in a thinking process to see if it's even worth trying to pull this off or not. Uh, but I mean, if if they don't appear to be powerful enough to really bust through the shipping container, uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and just move over to the door and prepare to help close it up. Okay. All right. Somewhere in there, then you know, Anson just waits, and. Corey, uh, having done what he was going to do, he comes back with a line and a plunger and waits. So, Sarda, the only person that you're aware of that's not in the container with you guys is George. So I'll move to here and ask if he's all Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just hacking up this last little critter here. All right, so I, I'll... Um, that's just a move, so I'll ready to shoot to cover his retreat when he does come back. Okay. George. Yeah. Um, we're going to try again. Okay. Yeah, I just, you know, there's not much else I can do. Okay. Right. Um, nine plus one is ten. Yeah, that's plus three to damage. 2d plus or three. plus two to damage actually. Ten. Ten points of damage. Okay, so this thinker, you bury the hatchet in his face. Literally. Yes. Bury the hatchet in his face. That excites me. And the area is clear, so with your minor action, you could run move. back and uh, hook up with uh, Sarda. Okay. Yeah. Let him know I'm good. Okay. So, you guys kind of get, get ready for the next wave. <laughs> get back into your container and lock it up. And at some point in the in the evening, you can hear that there are some more creepers outside. Um, Anson and Corey light off their explosives, which rocks the container, but. Um, it's not enough for it to, to tip the container at all. Um, but you know, this, this wall gets a little dented. Um, but beyond that, the container holds and you're able to wait out the night, wait, you know, as the bugs pretty much just decimate the rest of the camp and you wake up the next morning. Um, well, probably not wake up, but. Uh, you get up the next morning and realize that the camp has been, you know, trashed, but the um, but the creepers, uh, as soon as the sun starts to come up, they start to retreat and go back into the woods, back to their hive. Um, now, the obvious thing is, is that... Um, of course, you know, you, you, you're not going to want to wait out another night here. No. So, um, I'd suggest we head to the ship. Uh, well, yeah. there is, so there are a couple of options. Um, the, of course, it's way too far. Um, even if you had a, a working vehicle, it's, it's way too far. To drive to the spaceport. However, there is another uh, mining camp that is not too far away. Uh, and when I say not too far away, it is maybe another 60 clicks away. Now, they would have another transmitter. So once you got there, you could essentially call for help and have the spaceport hopefully send something, somebody to pick you up. 60 kilometers is, is a long ways away. Right. Unless you were to fix one of these vehicles. And it's early morning. 
So, I mean, you've got... Yeah, I mean, why don't we why don't we give it a few hours to fix one of the vehicles? Worst case scenario, we can't get it fixed. We head back to the spaceship where we're going to be fairly safe. They're going to want to salvage that thing. It is a valuable asset. And so, you know, they're, that's going to be something that they're going to definitely come after. I'd like to ask the officer to go ahead and, and restrain our our friend. The captain never returned, right? We we assume he's been horribly no, powered. He, yeah, he was chomped. You find bits and pieces of him. You do find his what's left of his corpse, and it's pretty mangled. So we've got her, and she was sedated, and then we've got the doctor who is also who's confessed his role in the kidnapping, right? Right. Yeah. He's... And so. Bocephus found um, a key card to a. Um, to a, a locker, a, a starport locker on Tobiah. Um, the other thing that that uh, while Jack and uh, Riker are um, restraining Sael, they find that she had a hidden Derringer on her. Nice. All right. Well, let, let's let's give you know let's until you know it doesn't take long to walk back to the ship. So that would be complete failure. We can't get any of these vehicles running. We walk the hour back to the ship, uh, but let's see if we can't get the the other one of these vehicles working, and then we can maybe make the sixty kilometer drive if we've got a vehicle. Yeah. How so. many hours from our last battle? Oh, it it's been so the last battle that you fought uh, in on the map that we were just on that was like ten hours ago. And honestly, before opening the container, I would act like I'm listening at it, but I'd be using my clairvoyance to check to make sure it's clear. Okay, yeah, yeah and I mean it we'll failed failed to do so. Yeah, but as soon try as the, again, as soon as the sun came up, they they retreated. Right, but I mean we're locked inside a container, so without being able to tell it's truly clear. Yeah, I, I just would keep act like I'm listening to make sure it's clear, but I'm actually using clairvoyance to check from above. And so once I'm able to confirm that, I'd open the door. Right. My, my sigh would have been re, re uh, filled. It was three hours and then one an hour. So we yeah. Through. Yeah. So I'm down a couple points. That's fine. So uh, does uh, any of you three have um, uh, either mechanic or electronics power? I have mechanics. Okay. I, I have mechanics. Yeah, I have mechanics. I have a, you know, elect I'm trained in electronics, but it's zero with the power. Okay. Yeah. I have mechanic zero. So I've got mechanic mechanics one. So if you want to make and whoever wants to make the mechanics check can make it with a boon. Sure. I have electronic zero as well too, one in computers. Would I? Uh, oh, that that would be a minutes. wonderful time to try to help out with with my stuff. Um, with, with maybe some of that awareness magic. That's true. Um, yeah. So whoever's trying to so see if I... I just had to re recently read awareness. It only affects you personally. You cannot grant bonuses to other people. You only can give it to yourself. Uh... Yeah, but awareness is self only. Oh. I think you are correct. Yeah, I see it. It says it right there. Yep. Yeah, yeah I only know this because I had to deal with it in another game. Uh, well, that's, that's a bummer. So, so, yeah, I guess I will uh, not do anything. <laughs> <coughs> so, Sarda, you can make a... Um, you can make mechanics with Boone. Uh, mechanics plus intellect or education, your choice. Okay, uh, so let me flag Boone here. Boone, all right. And is and it a computer's check for electronics, or? It'd be electronics power. Uh, That'd well. be a 13. That's pretty good. Okay. And Bocephus, you can actually make a science biology check if you have one. Oh, I have that. <laughs> uh, I have biology... I have biology one... And uh, do I get education or intellect? Yes. It? Yes, your choice. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. 
backwards. My, my frustration with this character sheet is that you have to re remember to turn off Boone. Other, it's really easy to just leave it on. Or... Right, yeah. I got an eight. Okay. So, Sarda, over the course of an hour, uh, with Corey's help, you're able to get one of the field buggies running. And so that'll hold, like, four people? Or how? Technically, it'll only hold two, but that doesn't stop people from riding on the rails and things like that. Okay, all right. And so... Bocephus, yeah. you do a little bit of uh, lab work, and you confirm that the liquid, the milky liquid in the vials that you found is actually a toxin that was derived from the killers. And that Telford developed this toxin to help uh, knock people out while they were in, or knock them out and put them into the Lowbirds. Well, I want to look through uh, through his bag and see if maybe he has some kind of anti-venom or something tucked away in there. He does not. Yeah. I didn't know, you know, I just figured if he worked on a toxin, you know, making an antitoxin would just make sense. But perhaps he's not as smart as he thought he was. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to kind of keep watch over them and, and make sure our prisoners are prisoners. So I am going to have to um, close this off just a little bit early. Um, I think I'm going to be sick, so... Um, yeah, get I some will, to take care of your ear. Yeah, I'm going to try to do that. and uh, But I will see you guys next week at 7 o'clock, and we will pick up with you guys heading to the starport. Okay, man. Hope you're feeling better. That sucks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Good night. All right. Have a good night. night.